So we're going to start off this course by using the most simplest equation I can think of, and that is x equals 10. So we know by looking at this, the unknown value of x is equal to 10. So when we're using letters in algebra like this, it's a container for a value. So this is like an empty box, which we can put a value inside, and it's a value we don't yet know. So by going by that, if we add uh, a number to this, let's say x plus 2 equals 12. So we can look at this and we know an unknown value plus 2 would equal 12. So x here can only be 10 because 10 plus 2 would be 12. But we can solve this mathematically and that's what this course is about, how we solve this mathematically. Because as we get into more complex equations, it won't be obvious what our variables here equal. So how do we solve this simple equation mathematically? Well, this is quite simple. So let's start off with x plus 2, and we know that equals to 12. So what we would need to do is get x on its own, a bit like this equation here. Once we have x on its own, we know what it equals. And the equal sign here is treated like a balance. Whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side as well. And that's how we move our values around on our equation here. So let's go back to x plus 2. So if we took x plus 2 equals 12, we want to get x on its own. So if we minus 2 from this side, it would leave x by itself. So x plus 2 minus 2 would be x. So the way we balance this equation is whatever we do to one side of the equals, we also have to do to the other side as well. It's the balance, it's the fulcrum point. So if we minus two from this side of the equation, we also have to minus it from this side. So we minus two from this side to remove the plus two, and then we also add minus two on the other side to balance out the equation. So by doing it like this, we know that x plus two minus two, it's just x, because plus two minus two is zero. So now we have x equals 12 minus 2. So now we can see what x is. It's a very simple sum. 12 minus 2 would equal 10. So x is 10 in this case. OK, let's look at another one. OK, so this time let's look at x minus 2. We just let, looked at x plus 2. So let's make this nice and easy and say x minus 2 equals 10. 10. So whatever the value of x is, we will take 2 from that and that would equal 10. So again, we know by looking at this, the only number that can possibly be x is 12, because 12 minus 2 would equal 10. And mathematically, we would arrive at that answer using the same way as we just did with plus 2. So x minus 2, we would need to add 2 to this to get rid of the minus 2. So that would be plus 2. So x minus 2 plus 2 would just be x on its own. But of course, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side. So this side of the equation, we have 10. And because we've added 2 here to remove the minus 2, we also have to add 2 to this side of the equation as well. So minus 2 plus 2 cancels each other out. That's why we added 2 to that side of the equation. So now we're just left with x equals 10 plus 2. So x equals 10 plus 2 and 10 plus 2 is 12. So we know that x is now 12. And we can substitute our original equation to double check this. So let's say this x here, we pop the value of 12 into there. And now we do this equation to see if it works. So 12 minus 2 does in fact equal 10. So that's how we check our workings out with equations. So it's very good to know that once we've finished our equation, to make sure that we know it's right and it worked, we can just go back and substitute the values that we found into the original equation and see if it balances out. And it's all about balance the equation because the equal sign here, as I said, is the balance symbol in equations. So whatever happens on one side has to happen to the other side to balance it out. 
So that's the point of linear transposition of equations. We're trying to get the unknown subject on its own, and that would equal a sum. Then the answer of the sum would give us the value of the unknown subject, or in this case, x. Okay, so that's dealing with plus and minus. Let's look at uh, multiplication. Okay, so this time, let's look at x times 2 equals 10. Now you can see the way I draw my x's and times different here. That's the standard way we do it. We would draw x like this and the multiplication symbol like this. So we don't get it too confused. Now, it's also good to note here that we wouldn't normally write this like this. What we would do is write it like that. So it's x times 2. Whenever you see an, two values next to each other like this, they're multiplied together. So if we were to see something like this, we would say a times b times c divided by 2. Okay, so x times 2 equals 10. So how do we get x on its own when we're multiplying it? Well, it's the same as before. We do the opposite sum. So x times 2, we would divide this side by 2. And that's how we would get x on its own. So what we do to one side of the equation, we also do to the other. So we would divide 10 by 2. So by doing it this way, our multiplication and our division cancels each other out. because so it's 10 times 2 divided by 2 just equals 10. So x equals 10 divided by 2. That's our answer. And it's acceptable in maths to leave the answer like that. Or we can do the sum this side if we wish. So 10 divided by 2 would equal 5. So x equals 5. Now we can go back to our original equation up here. So we can substitute x with 5 and see if this equation works. So 5 times 2 does in fact equal 10. So we can go back and prove our equation works. Okay, let's do one with division. Now, like with multiplication, we don't use the time symbol. With division, we don't use the division symbol. So what this symbol really means is that there's a number at the top here and a number at the bottom also. So what we would do is we would write our equation like this. So we would say x divided by 2 equals 10. So we take an unknown value and we divide it by 2 and that will equal 10 and that will tell us what x is. So on this side of the equation we have x divided by 2. So because we've used division we would use the opposite symbol again so we would times this by 2 and we would know that would equal 10 times 2. Now as before these two 2's would cancel each other out so they would not exist because something divided by 2 times 2 is purely something, and something in this case is x. So x divided by 2 times 2 would leave x on its own. And because we've times this side of the equation by 2, we also do it to the other side as well. So this would leave us with x equals 10 times 2. So 10 times 2 is 20, so that would mean x would equal 20. So now we can go back to our original equation. I'm just going to write that out again here. So we would have x divided by 2. But we're saying x is 20. So we're going to test this. So we're going to pop 20 up there. And that's going to equal 10. So here we have 20 divided by 2. And of course 20 divided by 2 is 10. So it works out. So we've gone back and we've tested the equation to double check that our answer and our working out is correct by substituting our original equation with our answer. So at its very basic form, that is what linear transposition is all about. It's about getting the unknown value, or the x in this case, on its own, and then moving all the maths to the other side of the equation. So we make x the subject. If you want to know more about linear transposition for equations, as it applies to machinists and people that work in machine shops, pop over to my website, G-Code Tutor. Over on G-Code Tutor, I have a whole range of courses that teach not only G-Code, but CAD CAM, machine shop maths, and inspection processes. So pop over to G-Code Tutor to pick a course today.